It's been a long time since I made a YouTube video about a movie projector. So I guess for 2015 we'll start with this Bell & Howe projector that can project cassettes of movies. Alright, so this came from Bell & Howe in Illinois. Sent to a place in Fort Wayne, Indiana. In October 1970. $1.31 to ship that. Cheap. So you can not have a messy movie drawer. You can put them all on cassettes. And you can load your cassettes into something like that, which I guess attaches to the top, although I don't have that. Uh, there's one that says Z, although I think the back of mine says A. Here's the instruction manual. 469Z, or A, I guess, or 459. And I guess the difference between the 469 and 459 is the 459 doesn't have the uh, multi-motion, like 6 frames per second and 2 frames per second. Trying to build on the late 60s Apollo space program stuff. Some ways to put a cassette in. Here's your rewind methodology. If you're not using a cassette, you just uh, project in a movie and want to rewind it. So. But most all this is, has to do with how to prepare your cassette for automatic rewind. A little bit of maintenance here. Oh, let me point something out. They don't show it here, but... If for some reason your film doesn't auto-thread, um, and you can't figure out why, and you've checked the whole film run, and don't see any problems. Remove those two thumb screws and look and see if you've got a film jam in there. Broken film, not attached to anything. Particularly up in this corner. I've had that happen. Something like that. You can accept your movies in cassettes like this in 50 foot, 100 foot, 400 foot reels. Um, also, if you don't want to use the cassette feature, you can use it as a standard um, projector with using that little attachment there. And what you do then is you look in your kit where you'll find a Super 8 adapter to put in here or a regular 8 um, adapter. So you don't have to use it as a cassette projector. Uh, you'd use it like that for rewinding a smaller reel, 50 foot, etc. and put it up like that for a big reel so there's enough space. But normally if you're using a cassette you just leave that down. And you have your projector lens here, focus knob. Here you have an integral uh, film cutter to make a nice clean edge for your film, your leader. Uh, pull this out and raise your whole unit, then you can uh, adjust your uh, table there, your height for your little stand. And uh, here's an interesting item. This is a frame, single frame advance knob used in conjunction with 
the still position here. You find a frame you want to see, you put your lever here on still, and then you uh, just to move that one frame at a time until you find the frame you want to look at. Your bulb is back here, and it is a DFZ that will look something like that. And this is your reel, which is also inside the top of the case when you first open it. And this is the normal projection position. For rewinding, you would put it up like that if you were using this with open reels using that too. Rewind. Got the Super 8 adapter on. But for auto threading, you leave it down here. You have your focus dial. And multi motion refers to the fact that it can do normal projection speed, 18 frames per second, slow of 6 frames per second, and step at 2 frames per second. You could always start an automatic rewind by putting that there. Normally you would leave that in run. Here you select your Super 8 or 8 millimeter off motor and lamp. I believe I said the bulb is behind there. Here we have our direction lever. When the machine is off, you place it in still, which also has another purpose. Normal running in forward. And this is kind of a special effect, reverse. That doesn't mean you're going to get the film out of the camera, you're just going to uh, run it in reverse for a little special effect. When you first put it in, first put your reel in and start the motor, you would hold that down for automatic threading until you heard a clicking and you'd release that right away. And uh, here's your framing knob. Here's um. Some of the instructions for the 100, 200, and 4 foot. The 50 foot is very similar except you kind of angle it in at a slightly different position. No big deal. These are all about making it ready for automatic rewind. There's a little uh, metal tab to put in there designed to hold the film and then tension the automatic rewind. You can just saw, slide the uh, your reel into the cassette there and then flip them together. This big one's interesting because it doesn't say Bell and Hal there. It's like it's a generic one. Even the the cardboard box is a generic white. So I guess maybe other people made these cassettes too. You got in on the phone. West Germany. The tape will sit in there and uh, the little hook will come out of the automatic threader and grab that and pull it in. Let's take a look at that. That little thing that comes up to auto thread the movie. I guess we'll try the big 400 foot reel. Avalon, New Jersey, the boat and water, March 1970. This cassette not marked Bell and Howe which came from Sears for $2.98. We'll try and start the projector with the light and then I'll turn that off and frame it and focus it and uh, rotate the tripod to the screen.
don't know how long I'll let this run if it's not interesting. Obviously, I won't show this whole thing. It's probably over 20 minutes long. At least I won't show it on YouTube. But I have not seen this, actually. Someone needed to learn how to take more interesting movies. Ah, things are looking up. See how things are going here. We'll turn back. there towards the end. Not sure. What's a 400 foot reel? About 30 minutes? Of course, I'm editing a lot of this out, so we're probably at about 25 minutes right now. Eventually, we're going to turn this camera around and uh, stop watching the screen and start watching and see if that little metal clip starts the automatic reverse like it is allegedly supposed to. Let's see if that little metal clip does its thing. Nothing new on the screen, just boats. There it goes. There we go. thinking about it. It's thinking. Does it need some slack? It's no longer thinking. So, I guess we'll call that experiment over. Okay. Well, it did project okay, other than a bad spot in the film, but that little metal clip did not do its thing. I have used Rewind on here before with non-cassette movies. Well, that's the Bell and Howe 1970 Auto 8 cassette projection system for movies and cassettes. This particular model is the 469A. I'm not sure how I feel about these cassettes. They seem to be a lot of trouble and 
at least my one quick experiment here, the little metal thing did not work. Or that could have been something with the operator, or that could have been something with the 45-year-old uh, projector. Maybe that belt is going. Anyway, I think these cassettes probably would have been more useful for a school or a business or an industry that projected maybe the same cassette, the same movie over and over, and rather than have some designated projectionist for everything, they could get their movies, training films, school films, whatever, into these cassettes, which were then very simple to use. Someone could just plop the cassette in, make sure they knew how to thread it, and other than that, the projection would take care of itself. At the end, they could just plop the cassette off. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll probably look at this again sometime in the future. I didn't take the time to do any of the multi-motion things or the reverse uh, projection, since I was mostly interested in the cassette function for today. So, you might see this again. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.